you know what I mean? It's, it's not a... Um, if you have any idea, if you have any connections with cities, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Peggy O'Neill Vivanco. I am the Coalition Director of Vermont Clean Cities and Communities housed at UVM's Transportation Research Center. Welcome everybody to this coast to coast EV road trip charging stop. Um, first, I want to thank um, Russ Scully, um, Lucia, Dory, the events team here at Hula for hosting us. Um, I also want to thank our great partners at Burlington Electric Department, Jen Green, Mike, Darren, I know the rest of the team. Um, and I also want to thank the fantastic Vermont Clean Cities and Communities team. We have our intern Cosmo, Emma, and my project coordinator, Gabrielle. Um, so we want to welcome um, Daphne Dixon, the coalition director for um, Clean Transportation of Western Connecticut. Um, Daphne's journey started on July 25th in Connecticut, where she picked up her 2024 Chevy Equinox um, from Leo Carl of Carl Chevrolet in New Canaan. Um, and her EV road trip will run over 4,000 miles and across 16 states. I won't list them all, but she's going the northern route, a couple of little detours, uh, and she will end up in Tacoma, Washington on August 20th for the start of the Green Transportation Summit and Expo. Daphne and I are both part of U.S. Department of Energy designated coalitions with the Clean Cities Partnership. So we work on transportation decarbonization, um, we work on mobility, we work on um, equity and access to um, transportation, all modes, but today we're talking about um, EVs and EV charging. So this is one of her planned um, events here um, to top off her charging, although it looks like she already did, um, and just share a little bit about her journey. This is her third cross-country trip in an EV, um, and it showcases um, the growing importance of EV adoption, workplace charging, um, and safe, secure, reliable charging solutions. So in addition to her regular charging stop, she's also um, highlighting and demonstrating one of our joint partners, which is Pioneer eBoost. They offer innovative off-grid charging, um, and they have a mobile charging unit that um, folks can check out later. It's in um, the front part of the car park. Um, so as I mentioned, this journey not only underscores um, the practicality of EVs for long distance, as this is her trip cross country, but also emphasizes really a crucial place for workplace charging. Um, we're both part of the Empower Workplace Charging Project. And so we catalyze workplaces who um, have charging or plan on having charging. Um, large businesses and small, BED is one of our um, project partners on this as well. Um, because it's a great convenience after home the next place that people charge most is at a workplace and a place like Hula that has multiple charging units as well is as well as amenities is an excellent example of good workplace charging. So I'm thrilled to welcome Daphne Dixon from Clean Cities um, of Connecticut. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Peggy. I'm so excited to be here in Vermont. It's one of my favorite states besides Connecticut and my home state of California. So three years ago, um, our coalition decided to embark on coast-to-coast -coast EV road trips that would engage every state in the country because we believe that there is an opportunity for everybody in every state of this beautiful country to learn about EV adoption. So our first EV road trip was two years ago. We actually, it was a 6,000 mile journey. We had a Mustang Mach-E and we started in Connecticut and sort of went down through West Virginia, cross over to Texas, and we ended up in California. Our second year, we had a Chevy Bolt, and um, um, Hertz actually was our vehicle sponsor that year. And we started in Sacramento, and then of course we made it all the way back, back, back to the East Coast, and up to Rhode Island is where we, where we um, finalized our second one. The first year was really about range anxiety. Can you get from point A to point B in an electric vehicle? A lot of people really thought, gosh, that's a really hard thing to do. There's a lot of press saying that it's impossible. There's a lot of horror stories. I don't have an EV. I didn't have one at the time. And I, I wondered, how hard is it to get from point A to point B? Is it a nightmare? Is it is it doable? So 
you know, we took that journey. I had my program man manager with me, Alyssa Murphy, and that first year, that 6,000 miles, was it a problem? No, it was it was fabulous. We stopped at a lot of attractions a lot of, along the way, a lot of places. You know, it was almost like a typical family vacation. We we went to the Grand Canyon, we went to Zion, we went to a lot of national parks. We had a great time, and we really had no problems charging at all. So I saw firsthand it's not a problem to drive across the country, and range anxiety is really what you make of it. You can decide to have it, or you can get in that EV and you can decide, you know, I'm just not going to have range anxiety today. The second year, what we did was we wanted to dive deeper into municipal EV readiness. What are municipalities doing to be EV ready? So our coalition has a municipal EV readiness toolkit program where we work with municipalities to help provide them with resources and support about things they can do to be for, the, for their municipality to be EV ready. And we were curious, what's going on around the country? What are other cities doing? What are other states, you know, challenged with? So the second year was about that. And we stopped at municipalities all across the country. That year, it was only 5,000 miles, but we still stopped at so many places along the way. And what we found, what was really interesting was whether you're a small town or a big city, all the challenges were kind of the same. Nobody really had it 100% figured out. and and. And even the small rural towns we found were actually very interested in municipal EV readiness. So the good news was that for us, the exciting news was that wherever municipalities felt they were in the stage of municipal EV readiness, they were all really interested in it. So this year, our third year, as Peggy said, we're taking the northern route. And this year is really about the charging experience. So right behind just the range anxiety, can you get from point A to point B? Like, well, what's underneath that? Well, what's underneath that is kind of the charging experience. Most people don't have EVs and they see people, you know, charging in the rain or charging here or there and they look over and, you know, what's going on over there? Um, people don't really understand how that works. I, there's, a, there's research that has shown that one of the barriers to EV adoption is this charging experience. So this year, as we go across the country, we do a site assessment for every charging station that we stop at. And what do we base that? What do we base that assessment on? Well, our coalition has done a lot of work around EV zoning regulations. And we have identified model EV zoning regulations that when put into place, these zoning regulations can help address barriers to a, char a, a positive charging experience. EV zoning regulations can help address things like you know, are, is there a cover? Are the cords retractable? Is, it, is there lighting, the proximity to, to services? So zoning regulation, sort of a, a, almost a secret, people don't really realize the power of that, is really a way to help make the charging experience more consistent. So as we go across the country, we do these site assessments, then it, it takes about a half hour, they're very thorough, these site assessments, and then we give the report to our local Clean Cities Coalition, and then we also, with the partnership with the Clean Cities Coalition, that can be shared with the zoning department of that city. And they can look at the recommendations that we make and the model zoning regulations, and they can determine if it, you know, if EV zoning regulations are for them. So the goal of this at the at the end of our, our, our um, 4,000 mile journey this year is to, uh, at the end of it, have identified what is a positive model um, for a charging experience, and then share that information with municipalities, with uh, charging manufacturers, so that people can start to see what a positive charging experience really looks like, so that we can move towards that consistency of a positive charging experience to help take away that barrier to EV adoption. So we're really excited about our trip this year. Um, we will go one more year next year to um, round out our, our 48 state journey. And then the, the year after that, we will do a um, sort of a best of. So you haven't heard the last from us, and uh, but we're thrilled to be here in Vermont today. It's a beautiful state. It's a beautiful day. And um, thank you so much, Peggy, for having us here. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> let's hope uh, Burlington, Vermont gets on the best of list. <laughs> um, so uh, there was a Bureau of Transportation Statistics study in maybe 2021, 2022, and it really shows that um, most of our trips are short distances. 52% um, of our trips are less than three miles, 28% are less than one mile we drive short distances. However, the notion of driving cross country 
though a rare experience, I think only about 40% of Americans ever, ever do it. Um, it kind of represents this um, broader aspiration and uh, for freedom um, and adventure and sort of the American automobile bucket list, right? Um, so for those considering EVs, um, this aspiration intersects, as definitely Daphne just mentioned, with range and charging infrastructure. So the growing network we have here in our state, we have um, great incentives from our state um, and from our local utilities. So thank you to um, VTrans and the legislature and Governor Scott for signing all of these um, incentives into into play and also to our utilities um, for supporting this. Um, so on this day-to-day um, -day travel, which is really what most of us do, um, the idea that, that Daphne mentioned about this, you know, charging experience is focusing on the infrastructure with amenities, lighting, safety, reliability, that you pull up to one of these charging spots and there's juice, it works, it's connected, all that. You have internet so that you can tap your phone or whatever to it, or if that's not the case, then you're able to, to, to still access it without, without internet. Um, because that reliability is crucial for creating an inclusive environment that benefits um, women, so a lot of us here are women, um, people of color, um, the elderly and those with um, some accessibility needs. And ultimately, if we have um, you know charging that's accessible to all of those, then we cover um, all our EV users. Um, and then I want to turn to um, electricity and renewable energy. You know we have um, BED's commitment to renewable energy to power the grid um, and integrating sustainability with transportation, also working with Hula on that their net zero building. Um, these all tie in with our city net zero energy plans, our state climate goals, and really work to support the viability of EVs for our long and short journeys. So I'm grateful to Burlington Electric for their support for this event, and I'll let Jen Green say a little bit more about that. Jen is the Burlington Electric Department Director of Sustainability for the City of Burlington. Thanks, Jen? Peggy. And I'm curious if, if folks are hot out there. Yeah, come in. <laughs> Feel free to come under the tent. I know I was kind of on the edge and still sweating quite a bit. So um, Peggy, Gabrielle, Emma, Cosmo, so appreciate you inviting BED to be part of this event. We really appreciate um, you reaching out. And of course, Russ, we, um, we honor you and we honor Hula and we're so thrilled um, to have Hula in our midst. It's really a model for us in our transition away from fossil fuels in the built environment. And it feels like a particularly fitting place to launch um, a celebration of strategic electrification in the transportation space. So thank you so much for Hula. And I just want to say my colleagues and I are especially proud. You know, uh, we provided some technical support and some rebates and incentives to make it happen. And just thanks so much for like for yeah. making your reality um, a reality, your vision a reality. Um, so great yeah, thank you. We great yeah. We think so too. Yeah, thanks. Um, so for folks that don't know, Burlington Electric is the city's um, municipal electric department. We have a goal of transitioning away from fossil fuels in the built environment and ground transportation sector. So we do this work in partnership with others and on behalf of the city of Burlington. One of the things that we do, and I think sort of highlights Daphne's work, is provide EV rebates and incentives, a whole range as well as rebates on charging infrastructure. So that's both commercial and residential. We wanna help ensure that everybody can charge, whether you're a homeowner, a renter, whether you've got off-street parking or not. So we've recently installed a series of utility pole chargers to help ensure that everybody has access to, to EV charging, because we really wanna level the playing field and make this possible for everybody. Um, Daphne, <laughs> um, we think it's especially fitting that you're here at Burlington as one of your first stops or given our work on EV charging. But I was thinking today about sort of how you are the bookend of another sort of Burlington based charging or a transportation adventure. So folks may not know that 123 years ago in uh, 1903, Horatio Jackson traveled in a, in a horseless carriage. He was the first person to traverse the United States. He left from San Francisco and arrived in Burlington 60 days later. Apparently, um, every car part had to be replaced over the course of his 60 days. And the story goes that even the drive shaft broke 
as he pulled up to his house on Main Street and South Willard. So I think you need to drive by and sort of give it, you know, <laughs> because we have entered a new age and we are just so excited that you're a part of it and sort of bookending that experience. So um, I think with that end, with that said, I sort of send you off with envy. If I could hop in that vehicle now, I would, because I know you're going to have a fabulous trip and I know that you will not have the uh, maintenance or operational expenses that the internal combustion engines that you pass will experience as they travel cross country. So um, yeah, Godspeed, have an awesome trip and do keep us posted. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, thanks Jen. I love the historical note there. Um, so we're also, um, um, gonna hear from Isabel Vivanco. She's a BHS alumna. She's a Smith College um, senior. She mostly box, bikes and, and walks. She does not own her own vehicle. Um, I know that personally. Um, but she did drive to Colorado for work during the pandemic in an old internal combustion engine vehicle. And in her um, time driving, we've already converted our family to a, a plug-in hybrid. And so I look to my kids' generation and see them as this really great transition from Horatio Jackson to Daphne Walker. So Isabel, say a couple words. All right, you come back. Thank you. It's so it's very exciting to be here today. Um, I've only had my license since 2018, but in that time, it's been super exciting just to see um, the incredible growth and evolution from gas powered vehicles to plug in hybrids to now electric vehicles that are driving all the way across the country. Um, and especially what Daphne is doing, this prospect of um, Driving across country in an EV is exciting, such so exciting that it's part of our reality today, um, and that doing this raises awareness about the safety, um, equity, equ equity, and accessibility, um, and bringing this forward into the future, um, and for safe EV charging in all of our communities. Thanks, Isabel. Um, next up, Lucia, um, CEO of Hula, and I. Didn't want to mess up your name because I didn't write it down. I'm sorry. Say Capriello. Yeah. Okay, Lucia Capriello, CEO of Hula. Thank you. Great. Sorry. No, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, so Isabel, I can relate directly to your experience as a walk bike enthusiast. Um, my name is Lucia Capriello. I live, work, and play right here in uh, Burlington South End neighborhood, and my husband and two young children can often be found traveling as a four pack on our bikes up the bike path to the causeway to Virtue Field, Centennial. Um, we go just about everywhere on bike or on foot, um, except when we go out to Bolton Valley to ski, which gosh, we'll be doing soon enough, which is hard to imagine on this gorgeous day. Um, so we are outdoor enthusiasts and environmentalists, which makes it especially awesome to be a part of this great team here at Hula, where outdoor recreation and sustainability are celebrated core values. Russ and Roxanne were so intentional in designing a space that surrounds staff and members and visitors alike with all kinds of incredible out access um, to outdoor recreational activities on land and on water um, because of the positive mental and physical health um, attributes that the great outdoors brings to each and every one of us. Um, they were also so intentional about the materials used throughout the spaces inside um, both buildings on campus as well as around campus, um, including repurposed wood from the Patrick Gymnasium up at UVM, responsibly sourced wood from some of the trees that were removed um, to build campus, um, as well as bricks from the Blodgett Oven Factory uh, sprinkled throughout the building to honor the space's legacy, which is pretty cool. Um, architecturally, as mentioned, Hula's refurbished factory setting is a net positive campus with a 1.2 megawatt solar array, 100% renewable energy, ge geothermal heating and cooling, and 10 EV charging stations, which are always in good use uh, by members, including Bill Kalfi, who I see in our audience, I'm so happy to see, founder of Mighty. Um, not only individuals are using um, EV chargers, but founders like Bill and his company are, help are running their business uh, using these chargers, which is pretty cool. Um, we also exercise our passion for protecting Mother Earth from the effects of human activity on the environment through green tech investments, which make up about 75% of the total investments uh, made by the fund at Hula, which is a fun fact. And finally, we are equally proud of all of the many partnerships um, that help put Vermont and New England on the map as a national leader 
like this incredible partnership. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to participate um, in today's celebration and today's send off. We're honored to be uh, with you. I think that's about it. Thank you all so much for being here. Again, congratulations. Thank you. I can't wait to hear about your three. I can't wait to hear about your four. Um, and, and also hope that Burlington um, is among your featured, uh, featured spots um, on this journey. So cheers, congrats, and thank you. Thank you. And next up is um, Bill Kelfie from Mighty, who um, we just heard from Lucia about um, him. We'll hear a little bit more. Um, I'm going to call you a new partner with Vermont Clean Cities um, and Communities. So come on up, Bill. So it's fun to be here and, um, and, and think of the support from Berlin Electric Department and Russ. And, but before I get into now, since we're talking about road trips and all that, I did in 1976 buy a Subaru um, back when that was not a cool vehicle to own. But I bought it because of my passion for reducing fossil fuel use. And I drove that 17,000 miles cross country. Um, and I, I, that was a project in 1976. And now uh, I have driven as far as Nebraska in electric cars. And so the whole range anxiety thing is, is a non-issue, certainly for me. But back to the present, um, Mighty is excited to be here because we are working out of a net positive energy building and we are able to supply our, our vehicles, one of which is parked over there, um, with that energy that comes out of this building. And that's really amazing. And to be part of Brilliant Electric system also and to feel like even if we weren't pulling from this building, we're still pulling from renewable energy and that supplies our deliveries which are going out uh, to the community so we're we're allowing independent retailers to connect and and people to buy stuff and keep the money here just like Berlin electric is is part of that effort we want to keep the money in the community rather than sending it sending it out of the community so um, i'm very excited to be part of this and support this um you keep moving around so i was like <laughs> you were just over there so part this, well, that's, I guess, part of what you're doing. So um, excited to be part of this, excited to be part of Hula, excited to be part of Brilliant Electric, and yeah. So as, as someone said, Godspeed, have a good trip. Hello, everyone. I'm Gabrielle Rainbell, the project coordinator for VTCCC. At this point, our press conference is concluded. We want to thank everybody who came out to speak, our coalition directors, Peggy and Daphne, our wonderful partners at VED, and a special thanks to Russ, Lucia, and Hula for hosting us here today. Um, thank you so much for the members of the media who came out. I know this is a very toasty day. Um, and at this point, we wanna invite you to explore the EV and ask any of our speakers questions. Thank you so much. I have pink soccer socks. Yeah, they are. And warm for breast cancer.